Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Wizards has finally revealed what the uh, leaked X-Men cards were, or X-Men Marvel, whatever they are. We've got a final X-Men that shows up on this one. They are from, apparently, a secret lair with some exciting reprints and uh, some exciting new commanders. And, yes, these are the uh, Universes Beyond kind of cards, so they are going to be reprinting them as universes within cards, we'll get into what that means and where they're at with that right now in a bit after we jump into the card. Uh, and and also, uh, yeah, where that uh, leaves us right now. Because Storm Force of Nature is a very exciting and very powerful commander. And if you want to play it right now, well, maybe ask your playgroup if you can proxy it. And if you don't want to pick up the secret layer, then just proxy it. Or wait until the, you know, universes within comes out. And if you don't want to wait that long, then just proxy it. So there you go. Proxy Storm Force of Nature. A 3-4 Mutant Hero with Flying and Vigilance for 4 mana in Teamer. Ceaseless Tempest, whenever it deals combat to a player, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn, it has Storm. I see what you did there, Wizards. Incredibly clever, of course, that Storm gives Storm. Now, this is an absurdly powerful commander. I mean, I'm talking about Omega level tier commander. I'm talking about S tier commander. This is a commander that if it's on the opposite side of the table of me, whether it's a proxy or not, or, you know, you do like a, you know, your own print version with a different art or whatnot, and you're just a different character. If you don't want to have an X-Men, you know, if you're not waiting for Universe Within, it's very, 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 very potent, very, very powerful. Basically, it could be a one-shot KO in a way where it's like, okay, I swing and I hit you. And this spell that really shouldn't have Storm now has Storm, and all of a sudden, I win. I just win. Good luck trying to stop me after I connect with this once. And when it comes to connecting once, well, your turn can become incredibly long with this commander because you can connect, well, once, twice very easily, and then again and again and again and again and again with the right spells in your deck. So I'm going to talk about all the different ways that we can break this commander. And uh, this is the kind of commander that, like, if I'm playing across the table from it and I'm like... You gotta convince me, you know, maybe pre-game by being like, Hey, look, I don't have these types of cards in this deck. Like a Narset Enlightened Master deck, or not Narset Lamb, whichever the, is it Narset? Which, whichever the Narset is, that's annoying. I haven't seen that one in a while, the six mana one. Yeah, you gotta convince me, you gotta show me, you gotta prove to me that this is not OP broken, hey, I'm taking all the turns, uh, kind of commander. Oh, I slotted it slip right there on what we're doing with this one. But yeah, <laughs> that and so much more. Let's jump into the quick take on this one. Now, if you are interested in any of these cards, especially Assault Strobe, a very cheap card, just 45 cents, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. That being said, yeah, Double Strike is where we're going to start because, again, our commander has a combat damage trigger that is incredibly important to use and abuse with things like, well, Double Strike. And you are in red, of course, you're in teamer, you've got plenty of cards that have Double Strike, you know, aspects, essentially. I mean, yeah, you can Fire Shrieker as well, but still. Even just getting your commander double strike once can be game ending. Again, flying is going to be able to get your commander through most times. Vigilance is nice, sure to you know hold back for blocking as well. Not all that you know needed, but yeah, you've got some evasion. Hit any player, get through. Hit twice with your commander, get that trigger twice. So again, the next spell you cast has storm, storm, which again means that when you cast it, copy for each spell cast before this turn, choose targets to copy. And basically, that happens again twice when you get the Storm Storm with Storm. Makes sense? Blood Mist, a great card to help you out as well. Now, when I, you know, showed off Assault Strobe, you know, that's a great one as well because, like, you can utilize that on the same turn you're trying to storm off. There you go. Again, Storm. Blood Mist, though, is one that it's nice to have in place. You don't have to worry about, you know, utilizing mana for a double strike effect. Enchantment for four. Begin of combat, your turn, target, you can hold it against double strike until I have turn. This, uh, what's the other one that's just aggressive, uh, something or what? Wizards finally reprinted it. It's five mana, gives all your attacking creatures double strike, which is nice. Or Rage Reflection at six mana. This one at four, though, it's like, you probably only really care about your commander having double strike for the most part. I mean, maybe you're going to make, like, a bunch of, you know, tokens or whatnot. You're going to make a giant army. Plenty of ways to do that as well with this commander, you know, once you get those spells flying. But still, if your only focus on this commander is just literally, okay, I want to have a big turn, I want to swing with my commander, I want to hit and then hit again, yeah, you can do that. And, and in a weird way, too, this commander can be kind of Voltron-ish, too, like, 
And not Voltron, I guess, in the way we're going to probably suit it up all that much. But again, if you are hitting at six, you know, per turn, essentially, with this, you know, Blood Mist or other Double Strike effects, and you are getting more combats or more turns, your opponents can very easily be taken out. I mean, obviously, if you can get your character some extra power, it becomes a three-shot KO very easily. Maybe even a two or a one <laughs> once you get things going, really. Savage Beating, though, here we go. An example of two things that are great with this commander. An instant for five mana play only during combat and only during your turn. Or, yeah, I said that in reverse, but still. Choose one. Creature control gain double strike until that turn or untap all creature control and after this phase, initial combat phase. Getting initial combat phase with this commander is crazy powerful. Yeah, so all you Ishin players out there that bought up every single one of the extra combat spells... Well, those spells might get a little more expensive if, uh, yeah, this becomes a popular commander because this is a commander that can very easily use and abuse all of those spells because getting extra combats is absurd with this commander. And again, with this one, hey, okay, I get double strike as well. Cool. All right. And if I entwine that, good, I get it again. Giving Storm to something like this is gross, uh, but also, yeah, just being able to maybe give Storm to any extra combat spell is insane because, again, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, Cast all these spells. Hit with my commander. Oh, I double strike. Okay, that's Storm, then Storm for this next spell I cast, which is, say, Savage Beating. Cool. Now, uh, all of a sudden, I get, you know, however many spells I cast times two plus the actual card. Yeah, you get like 10 extra combats or whatever it's going to be. And then you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I get all these extra combats. I'm just going to keep swinging with my commander and give my next spell Storm again and again and again. And you can see why this is a commander that can become obnoxiously powerful. Time Warp, of course. Again, literally, you're not just in extra combat territory with this commander because you're in Teamer. You also get extra turns as well with cards like Time Warp. Let's do the Time Warp again is what you're going to be saying again and again and again as you do your Rocky Horror Picture Show dance in front of everyone. Absolutely. And then they leave the shop because you're taking a 40-minute turn. Sorcery for five uh, in blue. Target player takes an extra turn for this one. You're going to target yourself, obviously. And again, giving extra turn spell storm is broken. In, especially when you're like, oh, um, I'm about to run out of extra turns. Oh no, um, well, I guess I could just, uh, you know, cast this one spell that brings in insert sorcery back to my graveyard to my hand. Cool. All right, bring this back to my hand. Let's do the time warp again. Because, yeah, there are a certain, um, you know, ones that actually don't exile like this one, so that's pretty crazy. One that does exile, though, which is still pretty gross. Very gross. Karn Temporal Sundering, Legendary Sorcery for six. Only cast it if you control your commander, essentially. And you're going to have your commander. Target player takes extra for this one. Bounce target. Not my impermanent. Back to the owner's hand. Exile card and send portal sundering. This one does exile. That being said, again, if you literally just hit with your commander with this once, you probably win the game. Because if you can cast a storm extra turn spell, yeah, you should be able to win with like six extra turns. Especially when you're like, oh, this is also kind of like a cyclonic rift in a way. I will bounce your non land permanence back to your hands. And I get all these extra turns. And there is no stopping me ever. Because on those extra turns again i'm coming through i'm swinging with my commander again and i am storming another spell so you can do some absolutely gross things now to have this incredibly explosive turn obviously double strike is very important and also making sure your commander get through but again flying is generally good enough to get through on at least one opponent but still yeah you're gonna want some ritual effects potentially too to have those free spells quote unquote or ones that actually generate you mana as well so you can get that storm count up Obviously, free spells can be impactful as well, or just low to the ground cantrips can help you too. Instant for two mana in Gruul. Add two mana into combination colors your mana pool. Draw a card, a very, very powerful card. And of course, if you have cost reducers for your instant sorcery, say like a Goblet Electromancer or whatnot, cool. All right, you cast this for even less. You actually net mana on this and you're drawing cards. Even just casting this with Storm is incredibly powerful, of course. Be like, ah, I don't really have like any extra turn spells right now or anything like that. Hmm. I guess I'll just cast all these spells and then swing with my commander, hit with my commander with double strike, and then cast this, and then all of a sudden make an absurd amount of mana and draw a ton of cards. And oh, look here. <laughs> Here's my extra turn spell. Great. Cast that and let's do that again. Let's do the time warp. You know how it goes. Mana Geyser, though, this one is obviously incredibly impactful. Sorcerer 5, mana in red. Add red to your mana pool for each tap land your opponent's control. Is that red? Is that just a mistake on the card, or is that just me seeing it wrong? That looks like the, the red in the uh, text box right there is a bit faded. Is that... Let me know in the comments below. Is that just wrong on just this, you know, version of the card? Anyways, yeah, being able to just generate this with, like, you know, 10 plus mana potentially, and then storm off with it and be like, oh, huh, I've got 150 mana. Whatever shall I do with it all? You got plenty of ways to win with this. I'm sure some giant X spells can help you out as well, some damage spells. That being said, 
Rousing Reframe, yet another great ritual effect, and one that can actually be free. It can be like a free storm spell for you on a turn, because you can suspend three free two mana, essentially. Add red for each card in target opponent's hand until end of turn, you'll lose mana steps to phase end. Exile with three time counters on it, so it keeps coming back again and again and again and again. All of a sudden, just giving you free mana. It's very, very impactful. Hasty, make sure you are considering this commander as well. Again, I'm glad they didn't put haste on this commander. I'm glad that it was flying in vigilance versus flying in haste. Vigilance, sure, again, is nice, but like not all that impactful compared to haste when it comes to a commander with a combat damage trigger. So you're just like, oh, okay, I get this down. Oh, okay, yeah, big explosive turn where I then, you know, cast cantrip, cantrip, or whatever it is, you know, ritual effect, ritual effect, my commander hit double strike cool and then extra turns and i win on turn four because that is definitely potentially possible this commander maybe even earlier but yeah give me your commander haste with something like this can be great obviously creature control of haste legend creature control plus one with zero i already talked about how a little bit of extra pump can be great for your commander again putting your commander at four power is great because again with double strike that means you're hitting for eight which means that your commander is a three shot ko not that you really have to win through combat with this commander at all expedite Instant for a single red mana, target creature can taste his own town, turn it, draw a card again. Just having these cantrips in the deck, these low the ground one mana cantrips can be fantastic for you because you're like, oh, okay, what I can do is increase my storm count very easily, keep cards in my hand, and also like if I have to just desperately be like, oh, I don't really have much I can cast where I'm doing all these like storm things. Let's just hit and then cast expedite and then, you know, draw 10 plus cards, you know, because I stormed off with that getting me other cards that I need, keeping that crazy turn going, or, you know, extra turns. Stormkill Artist, another card that is obviously very, very impactful. I can't believe this one's so budget-friendly. <laughs> Underneath a dollar, 2-2, two, two, plus one with zero free chart effect you control whenever you cast or copy an instant or source spell, create a trip token. Again, counts casting and copying, which again, with Storm, with the name right there, yeah, it's pretty crazy broken because you're like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, I just cast this, which Stormed, and I got all these copies of it. I got like 10 copies. Sure, I just get um, 10 treasures. Now I can cast other things like extra turn spells and such. Fun. Archmage Emeritus, again, another way to do absurd things. If you cast or copy an in-source spell, draw a card. Keep in mind, this is not a May, so do be careful because if you're like, hi, it's time for 150, and then you, you know, do that, you lose because you drew your deck. Unless you've got like Lab Maniac in play, but still, like, obviously you've got ways that you could just deal with your own creature, but just keep that in mind. That being said, an amazing card to draw an absurd amount of cards when you are storming. Another thing to consider, Octavia Living Thesis. 8-8 eight, eight Elemental Octopus. Costs 8 less if you have 8 or more instant source cards in your graveyard. Definitely can be a possibility of this commander if you're going to be spell slinging quite a bit, which you probably will be because you want to get that storm count up. Ward 8. Whenever you cast or copy an instant source spell, target creature can target creature's base card numbers 8-8 eight, eight until I've turned. Giving your commander 8-8 eight, eight status oh my goodness again 8-8 eight, eight, swinging through the air vigilantly lovely and then also just having double strike most likely hitting for 16 yeah any other like little pump effects will get you there for a one shot ko but at the very least it's a very effective two shot ko on an opponent there you go jodzi oracle or cave say another one to consider that has magecraft first of all you can discard a card to bounce back to zor sand that's nice but uh, more importantly Whenever you cast or copy an in-source spell, view a card to the top of your library. It's a non-land card you may cast by paying one rather than paying its mana cost with a land card from the battlefield. That is pretty absurd. Again, you're like, oh, okay, I storm with all this. Oh, awesome. I reveal the top card. Oh, cool. It's a ritual effect. I play one and play it for free. Yay. Oh, it's a land. It goes right on the battlefield. Gives me extra mana. Oh, another thing. Cool. Yeah, you can have some absurd turns with this in play. And on the backside, sure, if you need it earlier, you can actually just, yeah, get any number of land cards in your hand on the battlefield. Cool. Do that. Just dump your hand on the battlefield if you got a bunch of lands. Imnatsu's Augury. Another card I do want to point out, though, if you don't want to go the extra combats, if you don't want to go the extra turns, and that's probably the direction I would go, not, not those ways because I don't you know, like to win with Solitaire decks anymore. My, you know, Drawer deck is still in my collection. I don't really play it anymore. There's an episode on that, so make sure you check that out. That being said, yeah, big fun spells, which I guess this is still very Solitaire, <laughs> the one I'm pointing out right now. It's much more budget-friendly Solitaire, though. Aminatu's Augury, source for eight mana in total. Exile the top eight cards of your library. You may play land from among them on the battlefield until end of turn for each non-land card type. You may cast a spell that type. Exile that pink mana cost. Uh, this is gold to actually cast with Storm on it. It's absurd. Again, like, let's say you have, like, 10 copies of this, like, plus the original, whatever. Cool, you're, like, exiling the top 80 cards of your library, basically your entire library, casting whatever you want, and also getting a ton of lands into play, too, for more mana. Good luck to your opponent stopping you when you do that. So, yeah, overall, Storm Force of Nature lives up to the name. Definitely a force of nature. An incredibly powerful commander. Again, they're built in the, you know, most efficient way, the most effective way. 
it is an Omega level commander. It is. I mean, Storm is an Omega level unit, right? I believe. Uh, let me know in the comments below up there. Is, is Storm Omega level? I'm pretty sure if you can control the weather, that's probably up there. You can do some pretty disgusting things. Yeah, I would think it'd be Omega level. Anyways, uh, yeah, Storm, Omega level, S tier commander. Definitely one that if you're on the other side of the table of me, I'm going to be wary of you until you're like, no, no, no. Really, before this game, like literally look through my deck, I do not have extra combat. I do not have extra turn spells. We're good to go. I just have Amnatu's Augury, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. Cool. So make sure you uh, yeah, build responsibly around this one. And also, again, when you are building it, proxy it. Uh, yeah, when you have this commander... And Wizards is printing these that, again, are kind of like exclusive commanders until they're actually printed Wizards, you know, with the universe within. Just proxy it if you don't want to support the, uh, you know, secret layer that's uh, a bit exclusive. So, yeah, you can just proxy it. Uh, or, you know, if you want your own, you know, your own version of this, you can have your own different kind of commander. If you don't want it to be an X-Men, you know, commander in magic because that doesn't, you know, jive with you, then just, yeah, make whatever kind of commander name you want for it. And, uh, yeah, make your own theme around it. And there you go. You know, proxy your own card. There you go. Do that. Now, with that said, though, let's jump into really quick where we're at with Universes Within because Wizards is, uh, well, not fully living up to their promise right now at this point. Again, after the secret lair debacle, uh, I mean, putting it lightly, for The Walking Dead, they basically promised, hey, uh, yeah, you know those exclusive cards that we made that really upset the entire community because we're like, you know what? We're printing one-off cards that you can never get again. Yay! They basically said, you know what, we'll do a magic version of those cards at some point. And previously they had been doing it in the list, but now the list, I believe, is gone. Let me know the console if I'm wrong on that one. So they need to adjust the way that they're going about this. That being said, we do have some cards on this list. This is the list. I think someone put this on Reddit the other day, so thank you to whoever you are for doing that. This is the list of uh, cards we have so far that are, uh, yeah, unfortunately still uh, just like one-offs from Universes Beyond that do not have a magic version of them. And again, Wizards promised that they would not do that. That being said, I believe they did say this is like a technicality, like Edgen and uh, Zank and Holga. I'm saying those names wrong. I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm sorry. Doric and Forge, the ones, and actually, uh, yeah, Thumber. Uh, Thumber. Uh, they are, I don't believe, going to be doing Universes Within versions of those because technically d and is owned by you know wizard or hasbro or whatnot and so like it's the same thing as you know uh, wizards only magic i guess so like they have the ip so they can reprint those still but so they are going to reprint them i believe but they aren't necessarily going to be making universe within versions okay sure all right you get a pass on that one but yeah Lara Croft tomb raider uh celestial toy maker like the doctor who ones as well some of these that we do not have actual universe within versions of yet Wizards get on that, okay? Get on that. And they're going to have to get on the versions of the new Marvel ones that they're showing off as well to keep their promise. We will see when they keep their promise. They're taking a long time between promises, Wizards. Come on, I know you're busy with all these things, but get on top of it and figure out a way to do it without the list, please. Thank you. Okay. But yes, when it comes to the actual Universe Wing card, we do have a ton of them so far. Not a ton, like 23. But yeah, they have made good on their promise for those. So yeah, like Arvanox, cool. Yeah, all these ones from like the... What was it Stranger Things essentially? So we got a lot of those and very cool. You know, you got your universes within designs. You got some very awesome ones. I think Street Fighter ones as well. So there you go. You've got magic versions of them. They're reprinted. They're cheaper. It's easier for us to actually utilize the cards for those of us that don't want to buy a secret layer and then, you know, spend a ton of money on that. And then, uh, yeah. So, you know what? Either wait for the universes within cards to come out or proxy them. If you, if you want to proxy Storm, go for it. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that's a bit weird with this is uh, Arvidox the Mindful. This is off to the side, okay? So Arvidox the Mind Flail is Mind Flayer of the Shadow, the original printing of it, essentially. Arvidox is the actual magic version of it. Uh, Mind Flayer of the Shadow, this is not a mistake. This is actually upside down for a reason. It's just kind of like, ha ha, <laughs> the upside down, get it? Cool. Very cool. All right, so this one actually was printed. And uh, if we look at this, when it was reprinted in Universes Within, you know, with the, I think this is in the list, essentially, is what it was printed as. You see in the bottom right here, it says M equals secret layer drop 340. Cool, it shows that. That being said, uh, they didn't reprint it the next time with that. So, 
Rules lawyers out there, help me out, please. Can we use two in our decks if we have this one and that one? I don't know. That's just a very, a very weird one. I wouldn't think that you could, obviously, but like, Wizards, you should probably keep letting people know that this is like the exact same card because you have a new player coming in the game. They're like, wow, I got these two cards and they're awesome and they do the exact same thing, but they've got different names. And then they're told it's like, oh, that's, uh, that's actually the same card. You can't play that. They're like, but it's got the same name. I'm confused and there's no reference to another card on it. Uh, and they're like, but it's good, it does the exact same thing. But there's plenty of cards out there in Magic that do literally the exact same thing, and they are separate cards. So, yeah, it's interesting. We shall see where this ends up. I I mean, I'm not really actually making, like, a big stink about this one, obviously. I'm just saying, like, uh, it's kind of interesting that they are not also just mentioning the other cards in reference to make sure that you're not confused if you could use both or not. Just a Reiner and Commander? Uh, you cannot. You cannot just use uh, Arvanox the Mind Flail as well as... Um, Mind Flayer, the Shadow. So do not do that, okay? Do not use both in the exact same deck. It is a singleton format, okay? And with that, this episode is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts are on this episode. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.